every year in November for the last, I guess, four or five years, why we've uh, talked about uh, different awards that NMRA has. And a couple of years ago, why uh, myself and uh, Bob Blake uh, went down to uh, Greg's house and inspected his layout. And we felt that it certainly uh, achieved the AP award, uh, which he got. And uh, later on, after I'm done, he'll show you what all he did for that. So uh, according to the uh, information, it's one of the easier ones. I think that uh, uh, people who have a layout, I imagine a large amount would be able to get this Golden Spike Appreciation Award. So moving on to the next one, uh, there are several categories. One is the rolling stock. You got to display six units, either scratch built, craftsman or detailed commercial kits. And you notice that it says display them. Nowhere does it say that you earn a minimum number by judging, because there's no judging to this. Uh, these models need to show a little more than shake the box. I'm going to give you a couple examples. My th I thought of it anyway. Uh, freight car straight out of the box is not quite enough to qualify. And they talk about painting and decaling and add a little detailing and weathering and so forth. So I, I really think this car probably was a shake the box car. Uh, it is a all metal car, but when I bought it, it was a uh, kind of a disaster about the only thing that was good was the, uh, the side painting was pretty decent. I ended up having to paint the roof and uh, I had to make major changes in order to get the, the Katie couplers on and uh, make the trucks work because uh, uh, the trucks, uh, and you got to get the height right. And that can be a big problem. So anyway, I feel in, the, in this case, it now uh, moves from shake the box to a, uh, a car that would uh, qualify. And I'll show you the picture of the prototype to go with it. And I think that's always nice if you can show a picture of a prototype, it kind of, uh, it gives your, your own car a, uh, uh, Makes it look real. Okay, so here's an old car that I did many, many years ago. It's just strictly a plastic car. And uh, what I did is I cut all the rings out of the ladder and I put uh, wire rungs uh, in it, their place. I painted it, I decaled it, put on KD couplers and improved trucks. Uh, the dust probably doesn't uh, uh, qualify as weathering, but <laughs> this is all the way you look at it. You can remember back in the day of, um, I don't know, in the 1960s and 70s, model railroad craftsmen and uh, model railroader all talked about having your own uh, railroad. And so I jumped on the bandwagon and I decided that mine would be the Midwest Southern. I still have a few of these cars around. I'm going to keep them because of the, just from remembrance. But today, very, very few people are doing this. Uh, most everybody is using uh, prototype cars or uh, at least prototype lettering on cars. So this is American Models wood caboose. And of course, it's, uh, it is not scratch built, but it is a, a kit caboose. And I've added some details to it, which did not come in the kit. <clears throat> Now here is a, uh, again, a shake the box car, but uh, it's, it's unique in that it's a hopper car, but it's quite a bit lower than a normal hopper car. And so I cut it off and uh, then I painted it and I decaled it. And uh, since I could not find a Litchfield and Madison decal, and fortunately the car was black, I just uh, made a, uh, a decal out of a piece of paper in the computer and sanded it thin and uh, you can just barely tell it's there and if you're at the three foot mark you really can't tell it's there. So the next item is a the railroad setting. You got to have at least eight square feet of their layout that has been uh, scenic and is what we'd call pretty well complete. Uh, 
and again, there's no requirement about how good or how elaborate your layout must be. Just it must be uh, uh, completed and trouble free and it has to be eight square foot. So you can have, uh, they would like to have you have five structures. Again, the same kind of thing as the, the uh, cars and they, uh, they don't have to be uh, judged. And uh, so anyway, we'll take a look at some of that. So this happens to be Greg's, uh, uh, corner of Greg's layout that I took a picture of. And, uh, you know, he's uh, done a number of things here that uh, uh, I think would qualify these kit buildings. I believe they're kits, aren't they, Greg? Yes, uh, they're, they're, they're all kits, yeah. Yeah, but you know, it, they, they weren't, uh, they had to be built. And so I feel they qualify and uh, is a nice setting there with his road and he has the uh, uh, cross pucks going across the track and a uh, road crossing in the across the track so you can, the car can over, drive over it. Now this is a scene from Don Cope's layout. Don had passed away, but those of us in the area remember Don. You know, all of his buildings were kit built, a lot of details. And I, I just patched the pictures together so you get a better idea what it looked like. But uh, he was a fantastic modeler. And uh, certainly if he would have asked for, a, uh, for people to come down and look at that, uh, I would suspect that he would have easily passed for a Golden <laughs> Spike Award. This is a little scene that I built. Almost everybody on here has probably saw this on, uh, a, uh, on our other daily thing. But uh, the kits uh, were modified. They got lights in them and so forth like that. Uh, the air, lots of area around here is uh, uh, scratch built or somehow changed. So then we get into trackage. You know, I, I think the big important thing here is, is that the railroad runs. And if you're DCC, why that really makes things easier, I think, because you don't have to have blocks and things like that that you would for a uh, just a plain DC operation. Uh, you do need to have a couple of different kinds of uh, trackage, which I will show you here. Here's one from Jan where it shows a bridge. He says his uh, guardrails in there, which would qualify as a uh, an addition to the track. I think his track is uh, hand laid, which of course qualifies. And if, if you go to the right, you see a whole bunch of switches here. They, again, the switches don't have to be hand laid, but he, uh, the switches there, they all work. So consequently they would qualify. And look, there's a crossover between two tracks. Uh, there's a double slip up in there, uh, which if you don't, Let's see, right in here, there's a double slip switch and they work. And this is DC wow. operation. Uh, here's a bridge, uh, that happens to be on my layout. And the track is uh, uh, powered uh, by uh, uh, the bottom of the bridge has two square brass uh, structures on it to hold it so it doesn't uh, get uh, twisted and things like that. You can see the hinges off to the right. Whoops. You see the hinges here and there's also wires that connect to these brass uh, blocks underneath which then go up and connect to the track. And that's really what they're talking about here is about the operation of the switch with powered turnouts and things. Uh, I don't know whether, Greg, did you have uh, powered switches? I can't remember about that. Yes. Okay, so that takes care of DCC, of course, for DC, the block turnouts would qualify for two train operations. DCC op obviously makes works for two train operations. And any kind of lighting you add to this would also be part of the electrical. So I lit the inside of these uh, buildings 
I found the uh, Tom makes some really nice uh, LEDs, uh, which are have long leads on them. They also have the uh, resistors that go with them. So they it's quite easy to put them in. Not all the requirements need to be on the same layout. They don't even need to be in the same gauge. Although I suspect most of us will be uh, this, at least the same layout. Doesn't have to be HO, can certainly be Lionel, high rail. Uh, I, there I've seen several great high rail uh, layouts and I think they would qualify. And that takes care of my, you know, the qualifications necessary. So Greg, I guess you're on. All right. I have a question. Yes. Um, in terms of construction, the constructing the layout, there aren't any requirements that it be constructed in any particular way, like open grid or that. Yeah. Or it actually doesn't say anything about the. Um, what am I trying to say? They, the about building the. Bench work. Bench work. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> you don't actually. Do you, do you have to build the bench work? Or can you uh, purchase bench work and use that? Well, it's it's quiet on that. I didn't mm -hmm. see anything in there. Uh, I would say that bench work would uh, uh, would also be a factor if you did all the bench work. Why you? Well, I was thinking of something thing like uh, Neil. Um, Neil's modules where he uh, purchased the actual module layout. He added legs to it. He added his own legs, but he uh, didn't actually construct that. So that would work, right? That would well, the team is a stack of boards, uh, Jim. It wasn't assembled. Oh, that's well, that's true. You did. It came as a flat pack and you did assemble it. No. I think there's one thing you want to remember whenever you do any kind of uh, ask, uh, not asking, but you, uh, requesting an award, you want to tell people the other thing, the uh, what you didn't do is that's important as much as what you did do. In other words, in this case, uh, Neil needs to tell people that uh, this came as a kit and it was assembled. Uh, yeah. I think that's very important when you. Uh, request a, uh, a uh, award. I guess that's only fair when you consider that rolling stock and buildings can be kits that you assemble and add things to, details. Yep. <laughs> All right, well, uh, I have- Hey, uh, just a second, uh, Greg. Uh, sure. Before we go on, just for my attendance logging purposes here, I would like to identify two people I can't see in the little snapshots here well enough. The person with the administrator's iPad, could you identify yourself, please? Yes, sir. This is Phil Bachman. And uh, I've known Dave Besterman uh, in your group, our group. Okay. Uh, welcome. Thank you. And you are a member of the group in Hebron, Indiana, I see. That is correct. That is good. I don't think we've had you on here before, so welcome. And then uh, Chuck yes. W, is that Chuck Weber? Yes, yes. I'd just like to say that uh, there, it's a very nice white beard you're wearing. Um, <laughs> to our friend from Hebron. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. It's great to have you here. Dave Besterman was also uh, at the review uh, in April of 2018. And so what I've done is I uh, went back and got some pictures of the layout from 2018. Uh, thankfully, I have made some progress since then. So it was kind of fun to do that. And, uh, and also uh, a PowerPoint that I prepared to kind of introduce the layout. Some of you guys have seen this before. So um, we'll, we'll just kind of uh, go quickly through it, but um, it, hopefully it gives an idea of, uh, of how 
easy this is. I mean, it's like Ron says, it's meant to to be kind of an entry into the AP program. I haven't gotten any other certificates since then. I've toyed with the idea, but I'm expecting when I when I finally retire that I'll uh, devote some time to that and and uh, and see where I am. But uh, what it did do is get me more involved with the Michiana division and with the NMRA in general. I had been a member back in the, uh, I don't want to say maybe the early 2000s. Um, and, I, and then I let my membership lapse. This is when I was living up in Libertyville, Illinois. And, um, and so when I moved here to Indiana, uh, I, I got, uh, got involved again. And that's been a great thing for me. Uh, it's helped my modeling a lot, meeting all of you guys and seeing what you've done and, and, uh, and getting together regularly to talk about this stuff, as well as reading a lot, um, has really improved my enjoyment of the hobby. So uh, my layout is, uh, is located in uh, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan and actually a little bit of Wisconsin uh, in the early 60s. So I, I prepared this, um, this deck to just kind of uh, give some context and understand uh, where I've deviated from the prototype uh, and where I'm consistent with the prototype some of the ideas that I've, I had in 2018 about layout design and operations. Uh, those have, uh, I've persisted in those ideas for the most part, which is, uh, which is good, I guess. And, um, and then I gave some idea of what was happening or going to happen in the future. This picture here is actually a picture of the paper mill that I model. Um, and you, I have not yet weathered my paper mill model, so they don't look as good as this, but, uh, but this is the actual Niagara um, waterfront along the Menominee River. Um, this is, uh, you can see this kind of overview of the Chicago Northwestern in the 60s. Um, we're going to zero in on this area right up in here, if you can see my cursor. And uh, so you can see here, uh, this little triangle of track is, is what I model. Uh, and it leads to Escanaba. Powers is down here, Antoine back here. And so here's another view of that. And you can see that it actually, um, this is actually showing the, the um, I think this is showing the, uh, let me just take a look at this. What is this? Yeah, this is a Northwestern as well. And it, it, it doesn't, this one doesn't show this, the second line that goes over here to, to Escanaba that actually forms a loop. You can see that in the, uh, in the previous slide. There's actually two lines here. So this is the ore line that goes up here and this is, um, this is the regular uh, peninsula division. I don't know what, I guess they call it, we'd call it the, the main line, but this, so this track up here is where the, um, leads to the actual ore dock. This track down here, um, has many more stations on it, leads to powers, which then leads on down to Green Bay. Uh, anyhow, uh, some of the, the deviations from the prototype, I actually got really lucky designing this layout uh, in that I kind of just put a standard uh, yard in at Antoine and, uh, and as it worked out, it looks, it, it's very close to the, the prototype. There are two lines coming out of that yard, uh, one leading to the ore line and, and one leading to what I call just the main. Um, and, uh, and so my yard is a little bit different in, into where those lines depart from the, from the yard, left or right, um, they're reversed. Uh, I also had to, um, to locate uh, Kinesec, it's a town that has a branch coming off it that goes down to Niagara. I had to locate that east of Antoine um, and uh, on, the, uh, on, the, on the prototype, it's the opposite of that. Uh, and it's on the wrong line. So operationally it works, but it's not, it's not perfectly prototypical. Um, and then uh, the location of the of Kinesec Falls in relation to the Niagara Mill is also changed a little bit just to, um, to facilitate uh, compression. Um, but for the most part, uh, it is um, reminiscent of the area, if not exactly duplicating it. Um, 
So when I have an open house or if I have a, a large family gathering or, or anything like this, the, the slides that come after this generally are, are on this TV screen down there just cycling through. And the idea is that some people are fascinated by the models and they'll be walking around looking at different things. Um, and that on the TV, these, these scenes are, are running through, which just give some ideas of what's going on on the layout without me having to lecture everybody of what's going on. So, so these are, um, these just explain a little bit more. This talks about what we're modeling and apparently these advance by themselves. So <laughs> I, guess I didn't, uh, I didn't change that. This talks about the one train that I consistently can run right now is the Niagara turn. It goes back and forth to, um, to Niagara be, uh, from Antoine. Um, this talks about how we're moving ore uh, in the, the taconite plant in Groveland. This slide um, explains that even though uh, we're moving taconite, it's still called an ore train and uh, talks a little bit about the compression that I'm using uh, as far as train length. Um, the big paper mill that is on the layout is a Kimberly Clark mill. Um, it's uh, the, the one major industry I have completed. Um, there is a first class train that, that comes through here uh, once in a while. Um, the idea is ultimately those will be automated passenger trains. So the operators will have to watch out for those first class trains, but we're a long way from that at this point. Um, this just talks about some of the operations that are planned. I don't know, I don't think this is gonna advance on me. Uh, these are um, some photos that I actually uploaded to the NMRA Michiana Division Group IO uh, right after the visit. Um, and so the, these are consistent with uh, what the layout looked like then. And you can see there's fascia missing here. I hadn't done that yet. That's complete now. Some of you guys were here in September and saw that. But um, you can also see here this, I haven't. I haven't weathered the locomotive, but I have weathered some of these cars. This, this uh, uh, pulp wood car is inappropriate for the layout. They didn't move pulp that way. The, um, they moved them in, in gondolas. Um, so I'm working on that and making some of that stuff more prototypical. But from Ron's photo, this is looking the other way. So you can see that gas station, the Clark station, and Shelly's Diner is, is located back here. Um, this is another photo of the paper mill. So you can see it, this, this building here is going to be painted white to match these, and then all this needs to be weathered. Um, these uh, these uh, debarking, uh, or, or um, these are actually, these are not debarking tanks. They are uh, chemical tanks, and they are, have been relocated now as I kind of reconfigured this area over here. But... Um, but even so, we're able to get some decent pictures in here. Um, this is a, another angle on that shot that Ron had with the gas station and the diner. I intend to do a photo backdrop here and use some of these techniques that we've talked about with getting that road to look a little better. Um, this is a, a laser cut wood kit of a station. It doesn't look like the station at Niagara. The station at Niagara just looks like a shed, basically. So I liked the station, so I, I used it. This, this actually is a video. And so I think you'll be able to see kind of where the layout was three years ago. And those of you that were here in September uh, will be able to see there's some differences. So this is uh, the industrial track around the paper mill. And uh, you can see the control panel that was wired. That was the first one and the only one at this time that I've done. Now I've done four or five of those, so I've kind of gotten good at it. This is the, the Kinesec Falls, which now has been completely redone, uh, but is not complete. This is the trackage for the taconite mill or the taconite plant that will be back there. And then this is Antoine in the foreground, and the ore line is up on that second level going around the back. And then it ends abruptly right there. Now, of course, that track goes all the way around the corner back by the water heater and, uh, and around toward, the, um, toward the, uh, the ore dock. So 
Um, so made a lot of progress on that since then. What did you use for a backdrop? Uh, that is a photo backdrop. Uh, well, I've done, a, I've tried a few different things. I purchased two, two large photo backdrops. One of them was awful. And so I had to, I had to get rid of it. It just didn't really, the, it had, it had vehicles on it that were way out of scale. And uh, so it just was, it was bad. Um, so th the second one uh, I purchased is, is what you see there. It's actually, I think it's actually from Virginia somewhere. Um, but I, I like the look of it. Um, I've also tried just painting, uh, and I've in some other sections, I've actually painted uh, and blended uh, the blue into a lighter blue uh, to get that horizon line. And I like doing that. Um, so I've gotten to the point where I will go back and redo some of these backdrops, like behind the paper mill, that's all going to get redone. All those all those buildings are sitting on foundations that are just made of uh, of styrene, and uh, and so they they come out very easily. I, I I intend to light all that as well with LEDs, so there's a lot to be done there. But um, so the the last part here is just what does the documentation look like? So this is the letter that I wrote. It just kind of. I spent a paragraph just talking about what I'm modeling, uh, what operations I'm currently able to do, and um, and just a just kind of a summary. Um, our our AP chair was vacant at that time, so I sent this directly to Jim Landwehr. Uh, this is what the application looks like. It's real easy to fill out, and and the application, just like the whole AP program, is all described in great detail on the NMRA website. All the forms that you need are there. Um, so this is this was really easy to complete. You just put your um, personal information on here, um, and then you basically check the boxes of what you did. Uh, you, so what I added to this was uh, just a just a um, an outline, basically showing what I had um, done to qualify. Um, and you can see here for for the cars, I had weathered some of those cars. Uh, I programmed um, the DCC on the locomotive, um, improved couplers and wheels, um, but none of these were scratch built or anything like that. They're they're nice models, um, but they're not. Uh, they didn't require a great deal of work or anything like that. Um, with the model railroad setting, um, obviously that area in Niagara is what. It was about, uh, it was almost exactly eight square feet. I think it, it might've been a little larger, but um, but those structures were uh, modified kits. Uh, I did make some modifications to all of them, but uh, nothing nothing re uh, terribly remarkable. The, the idea uh, is to show in that area that there was an old, an old paper mill that just kept getting added onto. And it is, um, the the track plan uh, is fairly accurate. It's compressed, but um, there I have a I have a an old track plan from the CNW that I have framed on my living room wall, and uh, so I used that. And then Joe Fulmer had also uh, drawn a track plan from that, apparently um, that's floating around somewhere on the internet. I found it, and um, so I used that. But uh, anyhow, the uh, engineering, uh, you know, all the track is, is ballasted. It's all commercial track, but it, it had been ballasted and uh, it, it operates fairly well. Um, there's a crossover in there. There's a curved turnout. And then there, in, in a section of the layout at that time that, well, it's still relatively unfinished compared to the Niagara area, I had a crossing. And that crossing is actually giving me trouble now, but uh, it was working back then. <laughs> Um, so all that stuff is wired. It's all DCC. So like Ron said, it's pretty easy to qualify to get two trains running with DCC. Um, and then uh, I've, I've done a lot of work with JMRI and stationary decoders. Everything is Digitrax. Um, and so, uh, so that qualified for the, the wiring piece. I think that's it. So um, 
So I, I mailed all that off to, to Jim Landwehr. I, and I see my letters dated April 3rd and my certificates dated April 4th. So he must wow. have done that, done that, done that right away and mailed it back to me. But uh, it was a lot of fun. And like I say, it, it really uh, motivated me to get more involved. It was nice to have uh, Bob and Dave and Ron come over. And uh, I was looking at my pictures uh, when I was finding some pictures to, to put on here. I uh, I noticed that uh, I had pictures of Ron's layout from about three weeks later. So apparently Ron invited me over to an operating session and uh, and uh, we've done a lot of that over the years now. So it's been great fun. And uh, and so I think that for me, at least the the Golden Spike did what it's designed to do, which is basically get you introduced into the into the AP uh, pro the achievement program and also kind of get you more involved in the organization and uh, and get involved with the folks that are that are working uh, their layouts and and uh, so through that I've met a ton of people and and um, and really grown in the hobby this afternoon I'm going over to to see Tom Staffus who is working with me to get lights we're going to put LEDs on the um, on the ore dock. Uh, which I don't have a picture of the ore dock that I shared today, but I think some of you guys have seen that and it's coming along. So uh, anyway, uh, that and is there any questions or anything? That's what I prepared. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, on your rolling stock, it mentioned in parentheses that you upgraded wheels and couplers. Uh -huh. Is it actually en enough to do to uh, qualify a a car for the golden spike so well, i don't know you're going to take my word away sufficient? are you suggesting no that? no 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 <laughs> i just asked him that because <laughs> because because when, when ron was talking about it you know he was presenting cars that he had done uh, a lot of different things to in terms of adding details and so on so i was just wondering yeah i think that that i probably did the minimum there for sure yeah. well yeah. i i i normally uh add or change couplers and uh, put new wheels on and I normally weather so it sounds like even with a shake the box car that might qualify is that right I think one of the things that we should think about is is that this is just a starter award and it gets you know you look at the whole picture and uh, maybe it's a little bit lax in the car area, but the other areas like DCC is so much more than what's necessary. Mm -hmm. You kind of look at the whole picture of the thing and, and judge it that way. Although, you know, we have the different things you're supposed to meet. That makes sense? Yeah, just wondering. Well, and I think that, I think also looking at the, um, at the purpose of the award, you know, is to try to try to motivate people to get more involved. So when uh, when Bob and Dave and Ron were here, they made a lot of good suggestions. They pointed out some things that were that I didn't know uh, as far as like how some of the kaolin is used in the paper making process. And I ship that in a hopper. But in the Midwest, that might actually arrive in a tank as a slurry. Um, and so that's something I didn't know that Bob pointed out. And there were other things, um, other suggestions made. So I, it, and that, of course, is very valuable. Um, so I, I think it's appropriate for this award to be uh, pretty lightweight in terms of the, that type of um, scrutiny. But, um, but of course, the Master Model Railroad certificates <laughs> are, are a different animal. And so, and that's where... You know, one of the things that that we haven't done a lot of is uh, having judging of models, and uh, I'd like to see us start doing that. I, I think we did that in the past, but I haven't been involved in much of that, and uh, so I think that'd be a good thing for us to do in the future. Be great. Yeah, we did we did some of that, and it was pretty interesting and fun. We had mm -hmm. uh, different teams or maybe pairs of of us. Uh, evaluate judge uh, models at some of our library at a couple of our library meetings back when we were meeting in libraries and uh, that was uh, instructive mm -hmm. 
besides it was good fun to see what some of the other guys had done, you know, when, when they brought their models in. Right. Has anybody else here gotten the Golden Spike Award? No. All right. I would think several on this list qualifies mm -hmm. and would not have any problem getting it. Chuck Hart, he's got one right there. <laughs> he's probably got every, he's already an MMR, isn't he? Chuck? Oh, he's not, he's muted. Anyway. I guess he's done everything. <laughs> hey, Greg. All right. Yes. I, I had a question about backdrops. You mentioned that you've tried a few different things. <laughs> and so what do you think you're going to do going forward? It looks like uh, behind the Clark station, it looks like you use maybe some gray spray paint to kind of simulate horizon. Yeah. And, and um, I thought, actually, I, I kind of liked uh, the backdrop behind the, I think it was a paper mill. Yeah. All the cloudy skies, you know, right from kind of like, you know, bright, sunshiny blue to, yeah, you no, know, whoa, I'm in a heavy industrial area or something. <laughs> right. So <laughs> it was like, you know, Wizard of Oz kind of thing, you know, right. Um, but, you know, I was just wondering how you, how you feel about going forward. What do you, have you decided how you're going to actually do it to, on the rest of your layout? Yeah, I think that uh, I like the photo backdrop. Um, and uh, but it it's not entirely accurate. Uh, it's not going anywhere because it's it's huge and it was expensive. But um, but I like painting the backdrop, um, and I also like the techniques that uh, that Ron and others have demonstrated. Um, and the, the guy from who was the guy who gave the clinic back in the spring? I can't think of his name, but. Um, you know, he gave the clinic on painting in our at our joint presentation with Region Nine. Um, so I've experimented with those techniques, and I enjoy doing that. And what I'd like to do is is blend that with the uh, the technique of of putting individual photos up there to show the road uh, going into the back in the background and things like that. So I'm still experimenting. You know, I understand that the there's there's uh, some schools of thought there. One is you know the photo backdrops look very real. They're they're tremendous, um, but there are some that criticize that, saying, well, you don't want people looking at the backdrop that draws the attention away from the models. Um, so I I think that that's you know I like to view it all as one one thing. Um, and so I think there's probably a, a happy medium there between those two uh extremes and um uh, and so that's kind of where i'm headed i've got the projects on deck uh mean that i probably won't get to any backdrop uh alterations for another uh nine months or so well the reason i ask is uh this last week uh my all of my backdrops painted you know some color light blue mm -hmm. and uh this week i went after about a 25 foot section of it with pan pastels mm -hmm. and um and the uh stencils from new london industries and uh when i got done i thought this looks really nice but when you stand back for from it it you know the clouds are pretty pale they look good but they're they're pale hmm. and uh so i'm kind of wondering if that's a good tactic going forward or you know, because you, you, you got all the vibrant colors you're going to have from your buildings and your your uh, scenery materials, and then the sky be blue with pale clouds. Yeah. And, and and when I approached it, I didn't have clouds floating in the blue uh, because the backdrop's only 24 inches tall. The way I approached it was to just start at the top and have the the clouds hang hang down from that break off point that goes into nowhere. Right. And so I don't know. I was just kind of wondering how you you were approaching it and what you thought long term. Right. Very good. Any other questions? All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, uh, Neil, perhaps you can tell us the guy's name who's going to present in December. I can't remember. You're muted, I think, Neil. <laughs> yes, Neil, you're muted. <laughs> sorry about that 
Uh, my dog was barking earlier, so I turned my microphone off. Uh, <laughs> Andy Laurent is uh, okay. going to be presenting in uh, December, and he used to live in our area, uh, was uh, marketing development or something like that for South Shore Freight, which gave him access to all of the industries that they served. And uh, so uh, eight years ago, he did a presentation for our division at our conference that we had at the uh, um, uh, uh, National New York Central Railroad Museum in Elkhart. And um, he said if he has enough time, he will add a couple industries that they didn't have back then and uh, tweak the thing up a little bit. Uh, he ended up moving to Iowa, worked for uh, Iowa Railroad out there, I can't remember what it was called, but uh, and then ended up in a marketing job in the Madison area. So he'll be presenting from Madison, Wisconsin. And uh, his, uh, uh, what's neat about his presentation is that the industries are uh, all served by very small, or almost all served by very small sidings. So it's a place you can spot one or two cars and that are appropriate to that industry. And uh, so uh, regardless of the size of your layout, or if you're building modules like I am, it will give you uh, modeling ideas of uh, you know small scenes that can be served by a railroad. And I think you'll find his presentation a month from now uh, very interesting. Very good. All right, well, thanks everybody for attending and uh, this has been recorded. And so we'll have that out on the YouTube site and uh, we'll see you next month.